What's up? It's Colton Lindsay, your host of the WGR Live. I'm going to be talking with Brian Casella today. He's going to be hopping on here just a second. I want to discuss a couple of topics as he hops on. Is uh, Number one is go check out www.prospectingalliance.com to learn more about an ultimate community to help you grow with prospecting uh, and to create an attraction-based prospecting business. Number two thing is that we really want to take a look at is uh, Fearless Agent. You want to check out fearlessagent.com right away. Let's in the comments. That's what I wanted to say. BC, I might close off for just a second. So hold on. I'm going to switch over Sure. to make yeah, sure I got a signal here. Okay, Damn cool. It, dude. You're Sweet. So if you guys watch live, live, drop an L. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually one of the key conversations that people want to talk about. I just got out of the gym. And I ran here, and so it's kind of like, dude, I've got this tan line from my hat. I'm just realizing, holy cow. That's funny, man. Anyways, BC, welcome. Hit that like, comment, and share button, guys. I'm going to start adding people right away. So, Brian, first of all, um, for those of you that don't know who you are, give like a 90-second rundown of like where you came from and where you're at with your business, and just hit the key points mm -hmm. for those people that don't, don't know you. Cool. Yeah, thanks for having me, brother. Good to, to see you in good health and wealth. Brian Casella, Southern California. Uh, I've been on YouTube for five years. I've been in the real estate business for about the same amount of time. Um, after about a year and a half, two years in the real estate business, I started building my team and modeling after this man a little bit, as much as I could, uh, without the Mormon part. Uh, and then <laughs> I really started uh, pushing uh, mainly because of requests. Like, hey, bro, can you make more videos about this? I really started pushing more towards the educational side and making video and influencer side because of the impact that it makes and it became really fun. And I think that's literally what's been guiding me uh, now is I want to keep doing what's fun, what's fresh and what keeps me moving. You know, the day to day real estate hustle, I still do it not as much as before, but that doesn't fulfill me as much as doing all these other things that I'm doing. And I've created, you know, seven, I think seven streams of income now for myself. And it's just really expanded a lot farther and quicker than I thought it would. Cool. Sweet. So how old are you now? I'll be 32 next month, dude. Awesome. Cool. So 32 years old, and we're going to talk in a couple of conversations. Number one is, um, I actually wanted to have a conversation about eXp because a lot of people know that, hey, sure. I have my views on eXp, but a lot of people see me as completely against the company and against the people that are associated with eXp. And number one is you're a really good friend of mine uh, that is part of eXp, right? So yeah. why, did, why did you decide to join eXp and what, what are you seeing going on with that company that you're excited about? Uh, great question, man. It was, I think it was more a matter of timing than anything, right? Uh, just like you have, I've created my own environment here with my office and my people. And it seemed fresh. It seemed new. Our, our friend AJ was obviously a part of eXp for a while. So we got to hear uh, an earful from him all the time about how it was cool. And yep. um, it, it just made sense. Uh, there wasn't anything I believe in particular that really drew me in the whole revenue share and getting stock options and that kind of stuff was cool. I really enjoyed the fact that it was cloud-based, um, especially because there is overhead and fees associated with having a physical office. And yep. huge shout out to Keller Williams. I still love them. Um, you know, I, I, I never really used the office. I had my own space. And then having the ability to go online on the cloud and have your little avatar and go and get help and and get instant access to talking to people and also getting things like conversion and commissions Inc and a few programs that we're actually utilizing now just sweeten the deal for me. And so, I, so a little bit though, it's a little dorky, those avatars though, right? Just a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I made mine sexy. I gave myself like a little, you know, fur coat and everything. So when, when they have the uh, company happy hours, do you like, you go do some pickup artistry at the, at the company happy hours, like the course, avatars? Man virtually too yeah they have a little bar there it's awesome man awesome cool so how many of you guys are exp agents drop a one in the comments or two if you're not an exp agent i'd love to know kind of what the crowd is on there so let's let's talk about then you joined exp um there were some really cool things is exp your main focus is like are you like this like just exp junkie this is all that you want to do all that you want to grow or where's your focus with your business um, it's pretty split, man. Uh, I know a lot of people have a bad taste in their mouth about eXp because everybody, it's new, it's fresh, everybody's excited, everybody wants to grow their downline. It would be like getting in on Keller Williams at the very beginning. And 
that's not my primary focus, man. I'm more focused on building my team and making them better and growing our business and expanding. Like right now we're working with some developers and we're seeing the social media side, man, especially for real estate grow. Like the last two listings we've taken, we've actually sold before we went on the market because of social media, right? Like I'll post a little snippet on Instagram. Hey, we have this property coming up in Chino in three weeks. Boom. I get 10 showing requests within 24 hours. It's insane. So my focus has been primarily on that and growing my own brand versus just saying, hey, everybody join EXP. It's the next best thing. I, th I think it's a great company, but uh, I'm not putting like 100% of my attention units and energy and focus into that. No. Hey, can you give a quick shout out to Dylan? Because I think he needs a little love on there for saying, hey, gang. What's up, Dylan? What's up, buddy? My favorite Dude. redhead on the planet. Ask him if he's still in New Jersey or if he's decided to move to a much better place. Is he still there or yeah, what's pretty, going on with that? Yeah, he moved to, to Florida. Oh, finally, he made that decision to move to Florida. What's up, Antoine just popped on too. Cool. So let's talk about uh, then what are you seeing with online? And I think this is important because I notice it big time because I'm probably one of the most vocal people when it comes to questioning and challenging exp and just so you guys know i don't give a fuck what company you're with right i'm just sharing my life experiences and that's one of the cool things about social media that you can do you can you get a you get to literally dialogue your experience okay and um but what is it that you're seeing with inside of this division through social social uh, social media today and online presence with people does it does it seem like there's becoming really fine lines divided of of like haters and lovers and tribes and it, yeah. it, it just seems different. Does that make sense? No, no, I get what you mean, man. And yeah, absolutely. Right. Um, I feel like in the sense now uh, for a lot of people, um, it, it's more a sense of like, for example, right. We go back to when you started doing stuff on YouTube. Um, I started a couple of years after the whole focus was, yeah, growing your brand, but just giving, 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 giving. Now it seems like there's always this attachment to drama or, oh, you know, EXP mm -hmm. came out. Yeah, you know, like, oh, there's either people that ride for them or die for them or and there's people attacking them. Instead of just saying, okay, well, EXP came out and people who aren't even associated with it get so attached into it. Yeah. It's like, I, I feel like it's the new social media has become like the new like reality show series out there, like, like Meet the Kardashians yeah. and all that. Everybody just wants to jump on the platform and just start talking, giving their opinions, which to a certain extent is cool. But then some people, it's like a bloodbath, dude. It's like, oh, you're yeah. with EXP. I'm never going to join EXP. Keller Williams all the way or Exit Realty all the way. And it's almost become like this virtual war where the last thing we're missing is like the ability to push a button and shoot somebody, you know? Yeah. What happened, in, um, what happened to the idea of just being able to have your beliefs mm -hmm. and then – okay, you have clear different beliefs than I do, right? But yet we still have this mad respect for each other. Why can't people just have these beliefs and then respect that they're different instead of automatically go to this hate and to this anger and to this completely against what has to shift for an individual to, to see it differently? I think the, the individual needs to focus more on themselves and what they're doing and what they're building versus worrying about other people. I can't change the way you look at things that I look at or anything else. All I can do is keep pushing me, keep bettering myself, keep helping those around me, and ultimately be the example. Because I tell people, whether you love me, whether you hate me, the things that I stand for and what I do, the hustle and that kind of stuff, I do it. I embody that. So whether people yeah. love me or hate me, I'm not worried about that. I'm more uh, concerned with getting my message out there and helping as many people as possible, just like you, dude. I'm sure you get dozens and dozens of emails and messages every day hey colton man you're the one video that you made six years ago changed my life and that kind of stuff and if people focus yeah. more on that and i think the especially the social media world it would be a much better place yeah i totally agree we have to understand that we're all in this experience called life together and we're all trying to just do the best that we can but when we start to really break you know break apart other people's values um, and there's a difference between breaking them apart and just saying, Hey, we don't agree. Like we've got different values. That's okay. But like when you start to diminish another individual, it actually breaks yourself self down. And it's unfortunate that we've, we've kind of arrived at that state, um, in social media. Cause I think, I think humans have always kind of been there, right? We, we tend to break people down versus yeah. get people going. So, um, what we had a question pop up. What do you think financial reason of owners with going with the employee, employee owned business, i.e. profit sharing stock compensation, compared to private companies specifically with their brokerage models. So what do you think the financial, I don't understand that. I guess I don't understand that question. Maybe you do. 
What do you think is the financial reasoning of owners with going with the employed uh, owned business, i.e. profit share and stock compensation compared to private companies specifically with the brokerage model? Why go public versus private basically? Oh, I think I he's know. asking in regards to the owner of the actual brokerage. I think that's what he's asking. Okay. So go ahead and answer that. Uh, I, I don't know. I guess it would be probably self-interest. I'm assuming like if it's public and they can get stock and shares in the company and that kind of stuff that it would benefit them financially. Of course, there has to be a yep. reason that they're going to do it. You know, like yep. uh, same thing with all these 100% commission uh, fees uh, companies like Realty One Group, right? They're making yep. money somewhere, right? It's just yep. a matter of figuring it out. And I think that's really what it is. For most people, it's going to be some sort of financial incentive for sure. For sure. So I look at, let's, what are some of the, as, as being an in the company of EXP, what do you think are some of the um, maybe risks or challenges that realtors that are looking at the company may want to consider and that you've considered as far as being a part of that company? Okay, great question. Um, a lot of people, well, I think there's a common misconception out there too, that if you go with a brick and mortar company, that you're going to get training. And a lot of people will look at EXP because it's cloud-based and automatically say, well, I want that office environment, right? And uh, I think that's one of the biggest things is the majority of people in the business today are coming in and they're new or they're in the business, you know, one, two, three years and that's it. And I think that that's one of the biggest things. And for EXP to be able to now get that message out and say, hey, we don't have an office, but you can still get the training and get all the resources that you would get at a brick and mortar without that fee. If they can really deliver that message, I think the sky's the limit for EXP. I think that's going to be one of the biggest breaking points for them is if the marketing and everything and all the talk about EXP can handle that, then I think they'll have a pretty bright future. If not, it may be a little bit more difficult for them, especially with uh, the inflow of new agents coming in. It's crazy, especially here in California. Yeah. I'm looking at the license numbers. There's so many people getting licensed. It's insane. So it's just a great growth opportunity right now with with new agents and is the market shifting and big companies losing market share so the risk might be hey you're going to have the different type of community that you're not used to the community idea is shifting um so that would be the, the risk for sure so let's take a look at some other uh, other things that i want to bring up because a couple people and you you know you get criticism all the time first i want to ask how do you personally deal with criticism because you've also re you've recently gone we won't go into details but you've recently taken on a lot of criticism from different yeah. people very public criticism how do you deal with that and and how do you move forward well i deal with it differently now you know in the beginning uh, especially when I was making videos and I still had braces and, you know, I was kind of uh, <laughs> making shitty videos. I was getting criticized back then, you know, it's just the numbers have increased. Uh, back then I used to put my fists up and fight. Now it's just, I understand. And I've had a lot of conversations with Loida about this and I kind of, I've seen very clearly what would happen. And this is something that I knew was going to happen because as I studied other people who were great and big, the same thing happened to them. So now it's, now it's a point of accepting it yeah. as part of the game of life. Right? There's no resistance to it. Before, I would put up a resistance to it. And we know when we resist something, it gets worse. Yeah. When I just let go, I'm like, dude, whatever. I'm yeah. going to get love. I'm going to get hate. I'm just going to stay in the middle. That, to me, is the, the best road to play. That's why I don't even put any attention on it, any focus. We just do what we're doing. We just keep chucking, going, and the train keeps rolling. It doesn't stop. So I read a quote just the other day by Neil, Neil Strauss. You ever heard of that guy? Oh, yeah. The sellout, right? Yeah, the sellout. You know the sellout, Neil. Um, but anyways, he yep. had said confidence is not they will like me. Confidence is I'm fine if they don't like me. And I mean, I have a very similar belief in the sense of I will look people in the eyes. I'll tell them what I believe. I'll tell them what I'm about. And if they don't like it, fuck them. Right? Like it's their issue. It's their emotion. It's their thing. And I think I'm probably a little bit more vocal about it than than you are. And uh, I think it's just because for me, I want to make sure we make a stand for our values, for our beliefs. Um, and, and it's the same thing. I think, I mean, I've probably been even more vocal for you than you have, yeah. uh, because at the same time, I respect different people, right? So it, like I have different values than you do, but at the same time, I highly respect your values. And so when I see people doing that, I'm, I just want to make sure, hey, it's not cool. It's not okay. Like that's yeah. not how we treat other human beings. So let's let's shift gears. I want to talk about um, I want to talk about two things that people don't understand, um, and I want to talk about your house if you're okay with that because a lot of people yeah. are like, um, "Hey, BC didn't even actually buy his house. Is he really <laughs> like is is he really like doing a disservice to realtors out there?" So first of all, do you own it or do you lease it? 
the big one? No, I leased it. I was very vocal about right. it too. And people right. who actually follow me know that I've said it. Yep. Right. So. Right. And then if you're friends with you, like, you know that, right? Like, I know that you leased that house. And in fact, when I see people say that, why doesn't he own that? I just fucking laugh. I'm like, why would he own that? <laughs> right? Like, that's a terrible idea. So why, let's, in your mind, why, why, why lease that place versus purchase it? Well, uh, my objective from the beginning has been, especially learning from Mike Wolf. He taught me a lot about investing and he really opened my eyes to investing out of state. I have four properties that I own in Houston that I rent out and I own a duplex here that I split with somebody else in LA. It's a two unit, it's a duplex. And that was my uh, philosophy from the beginning. I learned it from Grant Cardone, rent where you live, live, uh, what, what does he say? L rent where you live? Rent, yep. Yeah, whatever. Rent. Own, buy, own where people will buy rent, you sort can of rent. Thing. Yeah, you know, it's all fucking twisted. Yeah. So I kind of jumped on that. And now at the, near the end of this year, the beginning of the following year, I'm thinking about getting my first, you know, above four unit property, right? To start mixing it up. But yeah. that, that's how it works for me. I just want to create some cash flow, have some properties, but I don't, I'm not super vocal about it. So people think like, I just leased the house and I don't own any real estate, right? It's just a matter of right. strategy. That's what it is. Right. And I, I mean, I look at, uh, and I own my own home and I say it all the time, it's my biggest liability, right? Because I got to pay Mauricio to come take care of the lawn. I got to deal with the, the whole paint issue of my daughter trying to clean the wall with um, hand sanitizer now, yeah. right? I got to deal with the scrapped wood floor and guess who's yeah. paying rent on that? I am, right? I'm paying a lot of interest to maintain it. So your house that you live in gang is a liability. It's not an asset, okay? So you want to you want to if it's not a, it's not bad to have liabilities but you want to have the cash flow to pay for that so you clearly have created the cash flow in order to easily pay for your your liability and yeah. it's a liability of lifestyle that's how you want to live right absolutely yeah absolutely so your lamborghini do you own it or do you lease it i own it i put 50 percent down i traded in my gtr I cut another check on top of it. I financed it for 48 months from a credit union at 2.1% or something like that. I think over the life of the 48 months, I'm only going to pay like a little over four grand in interest. It's like 4,400 or something like that. Yeah. So Josh said you got to pay for that on rentals too, which is true. However, if you purchase a rental property properly, you're buying it based on net cash flow and your renters paying for it, not you, right? When it's your house, you are the renter, you are paying for it. And when you rent the house, well, guess what? Boom, I don't have to worry about all this crap when the house needs the new roof, needs the new furnace, needs the new water heater, needs the new, the new stuff, right? So um, yeah, so taking, taking a look at that Lamborghini, was that a lifestyle choice or was that like, I wanna get rich as an investment? which I think it could go two ways, kind of. Both, yeah. Because obviously people are attracted to success, right? It's just like if a you know beautiful woman walks by, I don't care if a man's married or not, he's still going to look or at least pretend to look, right? We can't doubt that, right? And on top of that, even more important is I'm a car guy. I've always been a car guy. If you look at the other five cars that I own, they're pieces of shit compared to the Lamborghini as far as value. But I enjoy yeah. it. I just bought a Toyota Supra like a month ago, and I get more of a thrill driving that but the Lambo was not only an, uh, an investment for me as far as growing my following, but also a goal. If you watch my old videos on YouTube, you'll see the picture on the chalkboard of the Lamborghini. It's been there forever, right? You guys yeah. remember uh, yeah. the Mastermind, like me talking about it, like, oh man, I'm so psyched. I'm finally going to get it in a couple months. So you remember that. And it's an active yeah. part of it. It's not just, oh, you know, I, I want to show off my car. It's, yeah, that's part of it. But I really wanted this damn thing. And I remember being told when I was a kid, I'll never have a Lamborghini. And I said, fuck that. I'm going to get one. Yeah. So one of the things that I love about Brian guys that he, he does, even though being a part of EXP, his focus isn't to be a part of EXP per se. That's just a bonus on top of what his real focus is. Your real focus is building that tribe, building that, that community, building that team BC sort of speak. Um, and, and that's the real investment that, that we've got to make guys is not a company but you yourself being the brand like the WGR brand. So the answer a question Chad Boyle asked earlier was about why don't we start our own brokers? I don't know Brian's answer, but actually we did launch our own company. My, me and my partner, Zach, um, Refined Real Estate, and also Scott Ames recently joined our company. We had another gal, Annette, just joined. So we got 11 agents there so far since we launched it. Um, and we're not even really trying to grow that yet. That's not our focus yet. So we actually have launched Refined Real Estate. 
be prepared because with time we actually want to bring that as a national level um yeah. which i'm super super stoked with that so let's talk about this and i because i love how transparent you are um there's a lot of agents that criticize you for your mm -hmm. production um what you claim or don't claim yeah. so what, what would you have what would you have to say about that well um i've shifted gears and pretty much passed everything to my team right and people yeah. don't realize how much we're actually doing off market that never hits the mls whether it's a listing right yeah. yesterday we just put another buyer yeah. under contract with a home that wasn't even officially on the mls yet that we got from another agent so social media has really upped the game for us as far as being able to find homes for buyers and also selling listings even before they come on the market and you know i, I can think of a couple of deals right now that listing um we just put that buyer kevin one of our sellers who downsized, he's helping him get an actual mobile home, which is going to be a shit commission, but that's not on the MLS. I'm working on a just south of $5 million deal with a developer right now that's not going to go on the MLS. So uh, I, th I think people are too caught up with that one thing instead of saying, mm -hmm. look, I mean, again, if you've been following me for a while, you'll see, right? If people who yeah. actually buy in and listen to what I'm saying, I get so many messages saying, man, that one video about what you were going through at this point really hit me because those come from experience right um yep. I, I just think people are too stuck in the box and they're not thinking outside the box like what what, yep. what what do people want me to do start posting all my checks you know like start posting <laughs> like, the, the time of me having to explain myself is long gone right and, and just so you guys know i've actually seen pictures of brian's checks when he makes fun of mine <laughs> because his are so much bigger just so you know like um it. you know a lot of people will say hey listen um you don't do deals on you know it's bull crap i already see the hate coming on that it's on the market dude i uh i mean i i can testify for me we do probably 25 percent of our transactions never goes across the mls and social media has been a tool for brian to really increase his network and what i've been talking about your uh, building your networks right building that attraction based prospecting business i can't tell you the number of deals i'm doing a 1.5 million dollar deal right now that is not on the mls right that's a pretty big transaction that most people that are watching will never even do and then they'll question whether it's real or not because it doesn't go across the mls right you get right. to a level with your network where you can do transact i just closed a uh, 120 thousand dollar deal not on the mls i just closed a 270 thousand 260 260,000, 70,000 something deal just without crossing MLS. And what's cool too is you start to build your team is you help facilitate this, but then you have awesome individuals in your company that they, they, they run those transactions. They take care of those transactions, right? right. So how many people are on your team? Uh, Kevin, Anthony, Lloyd. So I have three agents, an assistant and two TCs. Uh, so you have how many? Sorry, say it again. Agents, I have three. One assistant, Valerie, which we just hired uh, five, six months ago. And then I have my two TCs that work on our files. Yep, cool. So um, what's next? What do you want to create next? What's your, what do you want to do? Oh, man, um, you know, the, the whole traveling and speaking thing I really like. I've been booking a lot more gigs. I think I have three already booked for later this year. Uh, another international one, uh, one in Florida, and I think one in New York. Um, the whole side of just going out there and, and speaking dude has really, uh, has really kind of tickled my fancy lately. It's, um, I don't know, man. I, I think we talked about that like a year or two ago, me and you about how we realized the impact that we're having on people and it's kind of shifted yeah. into our, our vision and that's yeah. kind of where I see myself going, you know? Yeah. That's definitely shifted for me. The whole idea of what my brand stands for, which is make a difference. I mean, I, I had a really good uh, friend that I consider friend and follower. I won't discuss his name, but reached out to me today about, and this is a very big thing, um, dealing with emotions. And he, he does 600, 700 K a year and has found himself using um, painkillers, Oxycontin every single day for the last few months. Um, and a very high dosage. I'm talking 80, you know, 90 milligrams a day, um, which I don't, I don't judge anyone because I've been to where I use drugs and alcohol to sedate right. the negative emotion, right? And so what happens is there's two entrepreneurs that I want to help. One is I want to help people actually get started making money, get growing and get their foundation started because that, that's always a passion part of mine. Uh, the other thing, though, that I really want to help is there's these entrepreneurs that start to hit some success 
but we're not taught as a social culture scape how to deal with the pressure that comes from it, right? Like I'm looking at, um, and the, uh, Rob is one of them, Rawls. He said he's committed to a full-time hate, hater, BC hater. Um, Abbas, he's one of the guys, Mohammed, right? A couple of these guys are just, they think that they're being funny by putting people down. But you look at a, a, a really good example um, is shoot, what was that? What was that news anchor on NBC that got fired for sexual harassment or some crap? Right, I can't even remember his name That's now. It. Right, yeah. um, but anyways, now what happens is 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 people then begin to put him down and talk shit on him through the media, and the dude's already dealing with a lot of shame, a lot of stuff, a lot of negative energy and so we perpetuate this shit over and over again matt lauer is the name right we literally perpetuate the shit i think it's really become a challenge for men in general because men are like taught not to be able to share their fucking fears and their anxieties and their worries and anxiety is a very big thing that a lot of people deal with uh depression overwhelmment stress so my whole thing is I want to really help people break through that fucking level and go to the blissful state, to go to the state on the other side of it. Um, so I think I get what you're talking about is, is the idea of just making a difference in people's lives. It's like, right. that's Absolutely, the goal, man. And you don't realize the impact you have, man. Like even with the messages that we get, how many people are not messaging us who are watching kind of in silence and who are making progress. That's the cool part. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely, man. I freaking love, um, I love seeing people make progress in real estate business, in their financial freedom, and in their fulfillment as a human being, as a spiritual being. When I look at you and financial freedom, right, and seeing where you were and where you're at, and I know right. we've collaborated on a lot of stuff. We, we even manage our cash flow very similar. Yeah. Um, and so to see people that are progressing, that's what's really freaking important. It's no longer, it's not about who's right or who's wrong. This right or wrong stuff has got to fucking go out the window, gang. It's got to be how do we get going to become better human beings, better souls, better people. And every one of you have one sort of addiction or another. Sometimes you want to inflate your numbers to make you feel better. I've been guilty of that in the past. Some of you want to, some of you are addicted to, to painkillers. Some of you are addicted to alcohol, to, to, to marijuana, which is very widely being used and considered recreational today. And I used to be one of the biggest promote, proponents, you know. I mean, a lot of the times we hung out together, I was high on marijuana, right? But my point being is, is you're sedating with something and top entrepreneurs tend to sedate with drugs and work and their cell phone. And I really just, I want to help people break through that. So that's my goal. Okay. Sweet. So how, well, how do you, you probably got to get going. How do you want to connect with people on here? Uh, and how do they connect with you if they don't know you? Google me. You'll find me YouTube, Facebook. Uh, Facebook's probably the best one right now. Cause I've been uh, a little bit more adamant about, I just found that the tab where you get the filtered messages I completely forgot about oh, yeah. it. Oh, yeah. I looked through there and I had like hundreds of messages to get to. It was crazy. Sweet. So, you, a great place is to uh, Google BC, follow him on Instagram. What's your Instagram? Brian Casella, Argentina yeah, 25 or something? Casella. Everything is Brian Casella. I just changed everything to my name. Yeah, I was just joking. Didn't it used to be like BC Argentina or something like that? 25? That's my YouTube. Channel. That's my YouTube. Oh, yeah, YouTube. Brian Argentina. Yeah. 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 That's awesome. Cool, man. Awesome. Appreciate you being here. Check out Brian Casella and um, hang on, gang, because I'm going to share with you guys a few more thoughts. But thanks, BC. We'll talk to you soon. All right, brother. Thanks, man. What's up, guys? Uh, first of all, a couple things I want to break down is just to really squash this idea. Everything I do with my social media is to share my experiences because I know my experience can connect with you in some way. I wouldn't have so many of you guys reach out to me sharing me sharing with me your challenges, right? So I just want to completely share and be authentic and transparent and be a genuine individual to help people feel better and move closer to, you know, a, a blissful state, move closer to God, sort of speak. A um, couple of things I, I really enjoyed about BC is how he deals with hate and with criticism because the bigger your brand grows, the bigger you grow as an influencer and someone that makes a difference in other people's lives. I've seen it on a local level, criticism. I've seen it on a national level. I've literally had people send me and my family death threats, 
right? So you're going to face that criticism, but how you face it is really up to you. And why, what I believe is the most important part, how Brian deals with, I love it, he just doesn't feed it attention, right? But what's important is the emotion that you move through with that. And I'm a really passionate guy. For those of you guys that know, I'm really fucking passionate. I stand for my values. I stand for people. I stand for what I believe in. Because that's, it, that's, 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 the, that's what I believe is the right thing to do is to stand up for humanity. And what has to change in humanity immediately is the conscious creation, the collective consciousness of, of love and support and get this idea of right or wrong out anymore. Stop the judgment of other people. 100%. And I'm talking right here on social media. We see it in our freaking media on CNN. We see the criticism of our present president of the United States. We see the criticism of famous people. Let me just list a handful of very successful individuals that are no longer alive because of either suicide or because of drugs, alcohol, something like that. Avicii, 28, recently dead. Michael Jackson, not quite sure what happened, but drugs were dead, uh, and he's dead. Prince, some sort of drugs, he's dead. Robin Williams, committed suicide. Uh, recently, number one California agent for Keller Williams, Kevin Blaine, dead, committed suicide. The list goes on and on and on and on and on of very amazing individuals that are losing their souls to the this energy of negative shame because we can't step up as other souls to see their light and get rid of dimming it down and get rid of shaming other people. A lot of times it's not like, uh, not just like um, this idea of not shaming people, but it's sometimes we don't have the skill. We don't have the skill set to communicate that, which is okay. We have to be focusing on improving that. I think that's really important. Another thing I wanted to talk about too is Brian owning or not owning his own home where he lives in, but he rents it. Understand your own home. Whether you're a buyer seller that works with my sales team, the WGR brand, or whether you're a realtor out there, your home is not an asset. It is a giant liability that takes money out of your pocket. And I teach this in financial freedom. Liabilities take money out of your pocket. And assets put money in your pocket over and over again. Josh says, you look like you used drugs recently. <laughs> the only drug I got right now is fucking oxygen, man. I am addicted to breath. I am addicted to fucking clean oxygen going into my soul, brother. So I appreciate that. Um, one of my favorite books on spirituality. Oh, man, I got a great. Conversations with God is an amazing book. Asking It Is Given is a fantastic book. Seven Laws of, uh, Seven Laws of Spiritual Success, Deepak Chopra. Um, honestly, those are some great books to get started, but most of the spirituality for me stems from the inside. It stems from getting into silence. It stems from silencing that motherfucking chatter that goes off in the head. You know what I'm talking about. It's that voice that causes you guys to stress or, or get energy uh, sucked out of you. You're either feeding energy into yourself or you're, 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 you're clamping down on it. You're strangling it. All right? And the reason why we strangle energy and keep it from letting it out is because of embarrassment and fear and shame. And it's because of some of these comments we've seen on this stream today and other comments of people being just straight asshole and disrespectful to other people. I personally take a stand for that. And I do not care who disagrees with me at all. Zero. I have no tolerance for that. What I have tolerance for is loving and respecting people, no matter their belief. Now, for example, these individuals that continually actually create this hate uh, and this negative energy, I can actually see how they're great individuals as well because myself, I have so much respect for them that myself used to be that type of asshole that I did not think about others. I thought so much about proving my point right. Um, so owning your own house is a liability, not an asset. Owning a Lamborghini, it actually is a liability that can be used as an asset, right? Because it's helping Brian grow his social media following. As his social media following grows, it actually attracts more people into this funnel, more people that he can make a difference for, more people that are willing to pay for his services. So I think that is extremely cool as well. Um, Anything else that you guys took away from this conversation, I'd love to see you drop it in the comments. Make sure to turn on those notifications at the bottom of this as well, whatever platform you're, you're watching or listening to this on, and like and comment and share. Um, I appreciate you guys' support. I think one of the things that I would like to share and finalize with this is 
I support others and I allow others to support me. Success only happens through community. Healing is just another word for success, brothers and sisters. And we've got to be able to support one another in this growth. But my, my wife shared this with me today. The ultimate failure is, uh, is to live a life without fulfillment, right? You can make a lot of money, but if you're not fulfilled, um, then you're not truly, truly successful in that blissful state. My hope for you is that you guys can you can share with someone if you need the support and you can support others. I once when I spent some time with the Native American tribe, Lakota Indian tribe in the middle of the Mojave Desert, um, I learned this idea of you've got to find the light. And the, the best way to find the light is to see it in other people. And then you've got to be that light. Once you can be that light, you know, that lighthouse for another individual, another soul, then you will receive the light in abundance and your fucking bliss will explode from the inside out. It does not mean that you will eradicate any challenge in your life. It means that you'll be able to move through any storm as the eye of the storm through essence and joy. And that's what I would love to see more and more people do it. Um, I appreciate you guys. Thanks for being involved. Go to prospectingalliance.com so you can learn. I create a seven-minute video talking about why realtors are failing today, 87% of them in the hottest market we've ever seen. Also, I share with people exactly how um, you can be part of that top 1% to 5% that is doing way above 20 deals and making multiple six figures. Hey, and Colton uh, Fisher said, uh, let's start a spiritual, a freaking spiritual mastermind. Fact, this weekend, I'm, I'm heading to New Orleans, Louisiana to host um, the WGR Mastermind. And I've got Jack Fontana. That's He's an expert on breathwork for over 40 years. He's going to be live at the event teaching us breathwork, which is really powerful spiritual exercise to do that allows you to process that emotion to work it through you. Because negative emotion or positive emotion, it's just emotion. A negative emotion, we end up getting stuck in us. And positive emotion, we tend to let it actually flow through us, okay? I'm very adamant about teaching this work of breath work to the people that will be open to it because it's how much it's changed my life. And, you know, my daughters, almost every night, we pray and meditate together. My daughter has on her iPod, she has the Ananda meditation app. And we've got to start teaching our children at very young ages how to deal and process with this emotion. We're seeing it with school shootings today. Not that they haven't always happened because they have. I was involved in a school shooting uh, in about 20 years ago today. About 20 years ago today that happened. Um, and one of, one of the things that I'm realizing is with the increased speed of information, it's really bogging down people's psychology, their mind, this chatter, this voice. And that chatter then really holds the negative energy inside of them. They can't process it. And so sooner or later, they turn to drugs or alcohol and they deal with shame by either attacking themselves, which a lot of us do. You're all famous for it. I know I am. But then they also deal with it by attacking others. And that's what we're seeing an outburst of doing is an attack on others with clear to the point of homicide. And so we it, it, it's not a gun control issue we have, guys. It is literally an issue of respecting other people. And these individuals that take it that far through suicide or homicide, it's because of us. We've collectively created this. I, I hope you guys can get that idea that it's not their fault. It's us who's done it. We've got to release that blame and we've got to change the engine, the motor going the other way that we can literally love and support one another so no matter what they've done. We've got to let that shit go because all you motherfuckers have made some mistakes in your life. Give me some thumbs up if you've made some mistakes before. I have personally made a lot of them and I am so grateful for that grace that God allowed me to pass through so that I can transcend to another level with my conscious level and, and just feel the blissful state of emotions. Uh, I asked the question, do you think um, do you think mental health will become more mainstream in the near future? I hope it does. I, I hope that it becomes a more com, com, a bigger conversation. Um, we really haven't had a breakthrough to be able to help people on, on a global level process this. Um, and it starts from within. It seriously starts from within. And if we want to change the world, we start to change ourselves. And I don't know any of you guys that are still on. And we had over 100 people live on this. And we'll probably have thousands, probably five, ten thousand 10,000 views on this video by the time it's done. I don't know anyone 
that doesn't have to deal with this in some way. Um, so it starts with ourselves, and that's how we can make that biggest change difference. Check out fearlessagent.com as well. Boom, most affordable, effective coaching and training on the platform. If you got buyers and sellers in Utah, you know the brand, the WGR. And for those of you guys going to be in New Orleans with me this weekend, I'm excited to see you guys there. We'll see you later.